congregation. How many Christians probably would have written him off, maybe even killed him? What's the matter with you, John? Where's your faith? You, you backslid. What are you, backslid? Grow up. Suck it up. Be a man. Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. I've always loved this scripture. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. What's a smoking flax? You ever, you ever blew out a candle and you see that little pinhead sized little red glow at the top of the wick and it's, it's you know, the smoke is, is, is rising up off that candle. What that means is he will not quench a smoking flax. It means that Jesus won't go up to that, that little smoking wick and, 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 and put that thing out. He won't do that. A bruised reed, a broken reed. He's not going to sit there and break it the rest of the way and tear it off. That's not the Lord that we serve. He tells John, he tells the disciples, you go back and you tell John, and I'm paraphrasing here. He says, you tell John, the kingdom is still going strong. It hasn't stopped. Lives are still being changed. Lives are being transformed. People getting saved. He says, John, he says, the kingdom's going on. What Jesus, Jesus actually promotes John after this. And not only does he not rebuke him, he promotes him in the eyes of the disciples. Because in the end, he makes this statement. He says, there's no greater prophet born of women than John. He says, this is a great guy, man. This is a great guy. But, but you, you have to wonder if there wasn't disciples, you know, with the group going, oh, wait a minute, man. he's questioning you. He's questioning the whole, uh, he's doubting, man. What's going on? And yet, and yet here, Jesus takes that moment and he says, what a great guy, man. This, this, this guy's tremendous. Somebody once said, where there's genuine faith, there'll be genuine doubt. Listen to me carefully. There's a difference between having a moment of doubt and that belief. There's a difference, folks. You're going through a trial. You're going through a crisis. There's a difference between somebody that's, that's just doubting, like, like what's going on? What, did, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right decisions? God, what's happening here? There's a difference between going through that and being an unbeliever. Think of Elijah, incredible faith. Bible says a man of like passions. But think about this, that here's this guy, man. Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal, rain, no rain. I mean, just on and on and on. And yet, there's a point where even he was hiding in a cave. And the Bible speaks well of Elijah. He says, Eve is a man of like passions, just like everybody else, just like you struggle with things, he struggled with things. And let me throw in too, let me throw this out. One of the things that helped John was that he reached out of his prison to call Jesus, to get a hold of Jesus. Not to call him, they didn't have phones back then. What am I talking about? He could have sat there in his prison cell and just continued to doubt and continue to get worse and let this thing fester and, and become even worse. But on the contrary, he sent disciples to get a hold of Jesus to seek out questions. He had questions, he sought out answers. It'd be like, there's nothing wrong with you calling pastor or setting up an appointment to say, pastor, can we, can we talk? He reached out to, to headship. Think about this, his doubts didn't go down, his doubts went up. It's just like questions, questions don't go down, gripes don't go down, they go up. In the military, they have a term. And that's behavior unbecoming an officer. Now, it's kind of interesting. This can entail many things. But you can be demoted 
for this, for behavior, conduct, unbecoming an officer. Because, and one of those things that can get you in trouble is that as an officer, you're always casting doubt downwards. You're always questioning. You're always doubting. You've, you've got problems with the command. You've got questions about the strategy. Or complaining. You're always complaining to your subordinates. And, and you can actually be demoted because they're saying that is conduct unbecoming an officer. You don't complain downwards. If you have complaints, you go up. Talk to your commanding officer. Talk to your supervisor. Well, it's the same thing in the kingdom of God. Listen to me carefully. John reached out from his prison cell to somebody who did have victory. To somebody who is doing something for the kingdom. You know the worst mistake that you can make? One is isolate yourself. You sit in your prison cell and you don't seek any help. But you know another bad mistake that you can make is that you go seeking help and you're going to the wrong person. It's like if you have marital problems, your, 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 your marriage is, is on the rocks. Well, you don't go to your Uncle Pavel, who's been married five times, to seek marriage advice, right? Well, if you're going through a time of crisis in your life and you have questions, you're doubting, uh, your, your faith is in crisis, listen, you, you don't call up some old backslidden friend of yours. You know, this is not when you go fellowshipping with the carnal guru, crew. This is the time when you seek out somebody that does have faith, someone in ministry, someone whose faith is intact. I need to close quickly here. The Bible says that Jesus told the disciples, go tell John. No, lock in right here. He told the disciples, you go tell him. You go tell John. There's going to be times, church, that somebody's going to be going through it. They're in their prison cell. They're in their crisis. They're going through something that maybe they've never gone through before. And they're going to need an encouraging word. And, and may I throw this out as well. And we all are going to go through things where we're... I, I've, I've, I've never been through this before. This, this is a new one. One of my favorite scriptures that, that I quote many times, Psalms 56.3, Lord, when I'm afraid, I will trust you. I will trust you. There's going to be times that we're going to be afraid. That, why would you, that scripture be in there? Think about the men on the, on the, uh, uh, in the boat on the Galilee. Here's this storm. These are experienced fishermen. These guys have grown up on, on the sea. They've, they've seen storms. They, they've been, storms are nothing. But this storm that they're going through is so violent. They've, they've, I mean, this thing, that they're terrified, that literally, I, I've always kind of wondered, I've always thought it was a good thing, the waves, the Bible says the waves are crashing into the boat, and part of me kind of tends to think, well, it's a good thing, because I guarantee you, somewhere in the boat, there was at least one guy that probably wet himself. The storm was so frightening. But here, finally, Peter, you know, gets a hold of Jesus. Do you not care? We're about to drown. This storm is something they've never seen before, and they're terrified. Experienced fishermen are terrified. We all will go through things. We're, if you want to use the word terrified, we're going to go through things. This is a new one. This is a new one. We all will go through trials where our faith is going to be tested. I've said for years and years and years, you can make all the quotes about faith you want, but until your faith has been tested, it is not certified. Somewhere the Lord is going to test your faith. 
and he could very well use a prison cell to do it. So let's close. Jesus sends the disciples, you tell John. If there's going to be times that someone needs to hear an encouraging word. That's all they need. Listen, listen. They don't need the sword through the ribs. They don't need a rebuke. They don't need to be pounced on and trounced. There's going to be times where, listen, listen. All they need to know is that they're going to make it. That somebody cares. That an encouraging word, a word fitly spoken, a word in due season from you. Will you be that person? Let's bow our heads this evening. Tonight we want to give an opportunity. Maybe you're here this evening. You've been watching on the live screen. Tonight you're not saved. You're not born again. Like I said, May 27th, I'll I'll be saved 40 years. Walked into a little church, heard a, heard a little, this little short preacher named Pastor Mitchell heard, hold, heard him preaching a sermon, gave an invitation. I raised my hand. I was sitting in the back row of this church and I raised my hand, gave my heart to the Lord. Maybe you're here this evening and you've been watching this video and Tonight, the Lord's spoken to you. Maybe somebody gave you the website. You looked it up. Tonight, you want to give your heart to Jesus. I want to pray with you tonight. Would you say this prayer? Say, just say this prayer tonight. Dear Jesus, I confess I am a sinner. I've sinned. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against people. Lord, tonight, I repent of my sin. I turn away from a life of sin. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I dedicate my life to you and to your service. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight I want to pray uh, for you this evening. That maybe you're here and you are going through a trial. Maybe you're here tonight and you are sitting in that prison cell tonight. If I can encourage you this evening, listen, don't sit in your cell by yourself. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out to headship. Reach out to somebody that's full of faith. But tonight I do want to pray this evening. Maybe you just, you need God to touch you this evening. Let me pray. Father, I pray, God, right now for every man and woman. Lord, under the sound of my voice that's home and watching this I pray, God, open the prison door of discouragement, of despair. Lord, I take authority over every demon spirit, every lying spirit of despair and fear and confusion. Father, I pray right now, I take dominion and authority, God, over these lying spirits, God. Lord, even those that would be under the sound of my voice that have been contemplating doing themselves harm during this time, I rebuke that lying spirit of hell. I pray this evening, God, touch every man and woman, God, with a peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray right now, God, cause your people to be led by joy, victory. I pray dominion, God, clarity and peace of mind. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. And just let me say, too, uh, I, I do want to say thank you so much for the privilege and the great honor it is to stand behind this pulpit. Amen. We will be having church uh, a telecast uh, 11 o'clock uh, Sunday morning. And so everybody Sunday, be in your place at home. Amen. God bless you.